Good afternoon. Skyscrapers, housing, financial and related services have been symbols of modern capitalism for about 100 years. And at present, whether we like it or not, we all live in the shadow of financial crises. Austerity, Brexit, wave of populism are all part and parcel of the legacy of the global financial crisis and the Eurozone crisis. And financial geography can help us make sense of this predicament and these challenges. It can be defined as the study of the evolution and governance of money and finance in space and time and their implications for economy, society and natural environment. I think we live in very exciting times for financial geography. Think about Brexit and its implications for the city of London and the British economy. Think about President Donald Trump threatening to roll back financial regulation in the US. Or Shanghai vying to become the global financial center by 2020. Or consider uh, financial technology, fintech, available on our smartphones, on computers, that promises to revolutionize the way we use financial services. And geography can help make sense of all of these uh, developments. Finance is also arguably one of the most globalized and networked of human activities. So to understand it better, we need a global research network. Over the last couple of years, with colleagues around the world, we have developed an informal network of people interested in financial geography. And with time, we try to formalize this network. Last year, we launched the Global Network on Financial Geography. A few months ago, we launched the website, which was designed by a DFU student at this department, Theodore uh, Kojoyano. We secured a little bit of funding from Regional Studies Association and from Free University of Brussels, and we were lucky to secure additional funding from the Inspiration Fund. This funding helped me perform my functions as the chair of the Global Network, so I could hire Marcel Metzner, one of our Enfield students, who helped me maintain the website, develop some social media presence, and support me in other functions as the chair of the network. What have we achieved? Despite short history, our network has grown to over 400 members from nearly 50 countries around the world, and is growing uh, fast. 47% uh, of our members are geographers, but there are also many economists, sociologists, political scientists, anthropologists, and other social, and not necessarily just social uh, scientists. So it's becoming a more and more interdisciplinary network. Majority of members are academics, but we have plenty of people from uh, policy making, government, international organizations, and the private sector as well. A few months ago we also launched a working paper series on financial geography and papers cover a wide variety of uh, topics. Uh, they talk about connections between different stock markets, what influences uh, stock prices and how these factors are transmitted around the world from Tokyo to London through to New York. In another paper, uh, we talk about a mysterious discrepancy between uh, two most important global oil prices, North Sea oil price and the Texas oil price that arose in 2010-2015. In a recent paper with Vladimir Pajitka, we talk about implications of connectivity and clustering uh, for performance of financial uh, firms. There are papers that talk about financialization of housing in China and urbanization in China. Did you know, for example, that at present the US financial sector actually employs fewer women than it did before the crisis? Yeah. And in general, the financial sector is at least as male dominated as it was 
10 years ago. So no good news there. We've organized a series of events, nearly a dozen just this year, including a workshop on finance, geography and sustainability at MIT. Next week we're meeting in uh, Singapore uh, at a conference on global financial and production networks. Uh, I'm very excited that we will organize next year uh, the first Fingio Spring School, which is targeted at uh, young academics uh, interested in financial geography, not necessarily uh, geographers. And with young people in mind, we will also award another Fingio dissertation prize. So if you know anyone working, finishing a PhD on a topic related to financial geography, let us know. Our long-term objective is to make the Global Network on Financial Geography a go-to place for researchers, finance professionals, policy makers, go-to place for research and research-informed commentary on any topics related to finance and uh, geography. So again, I think we live in very exciting times for this area of research. Financial geography is really conducive to helping us to understand the world and its trajectory. Think, for example, of the rise of China in geopolitical and geoeconomic terms. It's difficult to understand without considering liberalization of Chinese financial markets or internationalization of the Chinese currency. Only a few weeks ago, the deputy governor at the Bank of England entitled his speech Geofinance talking about the significance of borders and geography in general for finance. So to find out more and join us, please go to fingio.net. Thank you. Thank you very much, Derek. And, uh, and I think something to say is that the very small sums of money that each of these projects have received is clearly having a big sort of multiplier effect and going a long way to contribute to, to wider projects and activities, which is our, our big plan. Now, I like Africa, and I'm very pleased to say that the next talk um, by Nancy and Saskia takes us to Kenya. <laughs>